hey. Hi, how are you? Oh, good, good. Oh, as you could tell, I've been late on everything today. <laughs> I mean, that's okay. Like we all have, we all have those days. We all have those days. I mean, but we're here, and it's good. Mm -hmm. I, luckily, I've been ahead on work, so it leaves me time to do other stuff. So does I'm that mean we could that. have like a four-hour show today? Yeah, no, never that. <laughs> you know, you know, like hour and a half for me, like is 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 pushing it. But I do it for I do it for for the um for the for our subs and for you. So I don't mind it. But it's just, whew. I know. <laughs> I'll but be honest. I, I didn't you. think I could talk for an hour. Oh my god! But like, you have to admit, like I learn a lot. I learn a lot. Like there's so many different perspectives that I would have never, ever, ever been, you know, even thought about. So I can't, exactly. but that's just selfish on my part. Maybe I just want people to talk to, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, I get it. I totally get it. Like it's just during these times, like this is like literally like the same as going out to a restaurant or going out to a movie. Like, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Like, so, COVID's done a number on me, I swear. Ugh. But anywho, do we want to say hi to everybody in the chat? Do you wanna do you wanna take that wheel today? Yeah, give me two seconds. I'm so sorry. Like uh had to log in from the laptop because my phone is low and for some reason like the <laughs> for some reason the um I don't have the internet issues, the connection issues through the through the laptop. So this just lets mm -hmm. me know I need to invest in a new laptop. So that'll oh. be next. Okay. What I do through, through my phone, I feel like the connection is not as good, but through the laptop, mm -hmm. it seems to be much better. So I definitely need to do that. Oh, sweet. Okay. So who we got here? Let me see. Sorry, I can't. I can't. I have to have this open. I can't like have. I don't want to flip back and forth. So mm -hmm. let's see. Sad Star is here. Gina Maxi is here. Ouch. Um, Ms. Grine Lambert is here. Hey, Jenny. Hey, Black Lavender. Good to see y'all. Trey is here. Ryan's here. Yanni's here. Who else? Who else? Who else? Bobble's good to see you. Yay. And uh, FM is here. Always great to see FM. And I think that's it for now. Yes. And as you enter the room, please, 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 please. Hit the like or dislike button. We like all feedback. Um, subscribe if you haven't already, and please leave a comment. Um, we like to hear what you have to say. Um, okay, so we have the family Chantel, season two, episode mm -hmm. nine. Sometimes people are snakes. Mm. This we have episode was weird. <laughs> I was so hey, confused. Hi. I was confused by the family Chantel. I ain't gonna lie. Like I was happy with with um Mama Lydia. Um for the first time I was really happy with the DR uh storyline. But I was kind of confused by uh the Philippines storyline. I think do we want to dissect them per country to make it easier. Sure. I think that might be a good way. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can start with the DR um, part. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I will say this as a whole, for me, there was not much in this episode. I'm not sure if you felt the same way. I felt, to be completely honest, I kind of felt the trailers last week told me what was going to happen. Yes. <laughs> but they did not tell us that Miss Lydia was going to take a swing at Alejandro with her purse. Yeah, I was like, what? I loved it. I loved it. And then she said, she said something. Um, she was going to hit him with her shoe to drain his bad blood. I was like, do it, do it, do it. I was like, wow, Lydia, violence? Are you a lawyer? I like her. I would, I would, I would hire you to sue yourself. But 
I can understand where she's coming from. No mom, I'm not a mom, but no mom wants to see their kid go down a bad path, especially if it's a path that they themselves went down and they know better. Right, but the thing is, there is a stark difference though. So Lydia was in a situation with someone who already had children. So I don't care what people say, unless there's a, typically unless there's abuse, um, there's always a chance that mm -hmm. if you're not married, like they could go back to their baby, their original baby's mother. So that there's a stark difference. He was like, I'm in the middle of a divorce. Um, we're not even together. Like, because his, his, he said his ex wife was real cool with him separating until he found out about Nicole. That's when she's like, Look, I'm not cool no more. So that their situation is very different. Um, so I'm not um, mad at it. Haven't they been like, people keep on asking him if he has kids. Has he answered that yet? Nicole said he doesn't have any, and then Lydia said he's hiding them from you. That killed me. Honestly, I think that could be season three. I think so. So then, no one outright asked him. No one outright asked him. She didn't. She didn't miss Lydia. She oh, no. I she no. Somebody she did. Stated, no, she stated uh -huh. he had a family. Nicole said he doesn't have children. Mm -hmm. Lydia came back and said he's hiding them from you. That's how that that's how that went back and forth. Oh my god. Yeah, but that could be season three. The kids come out of the woodwork. The kids, the kids, the kids come out the woodwork. Oh. They probably film they probably film that part right now. Oh Jesus. Oh yeah, yeah. But how yeah, you... I I just felt bad for, for Lydia. You know, it's something that she does not have control over. Mm -hmm. And she's a woman that's used to being in control. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't want to be alone. And she feels her daughter slipping away. Mm -hmm. And she feels that she's going down a bad path. Like, yeah. I, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of, of the DR scenes, but mm -hmm. I had to feel for, for Miss Lydia. I just had to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get I get her point of view and everything, but at the at the end of the day, like what you what she just needs to do is like, look, you know what I went through. This is why I feel the way I feel. It's your life. Just understand, like you, whatever consequences come out of this, they're your consequences. Were you confused at the end um, when Nicole went to see the mom, the, the mother at the apartment? I found that Nicole came in a little aggressive. Um, and then, like, the mom was like, you you know, you're on your own. What's that mean? Right, I, I took it, I'm like, are you kicking her out? Because I, I thought they might have lived together. Like, are you kicking her out? Like, what's going on? Are you disowning her? Wait. Oh, my God. I just saw this black pudding. Black pudding is so good. And yes, well, old school is made from blood, but um, uh, I think now they use coloring. But yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> um, yeah. Sorry, I, I diverted. Okay, no. food, food makes me uh, divert because I'm a little hungry now. Um, okay, so yeah. Real quick, but the food that mm -hmm. Anjanette's house, I probably would have tried everything, but we'll talk yeah. about that when we get there. When we get there. When we get there. Yes. Uh, yes. But um, it was just interesting that the way they communicate is like, and I, I see this a lot with mothers and daughters, they kind of just do that. Mm -hmm. But it's just, if they both had come in with like a little under 10, they would have been cool. Nicole should just come in. Like I would come in like, look, mom, mm -hmm. I completely understand where you're coming from. I'm disappointed in the way you behave. It's unbecoming of how you raised us. Mm -hmm. That's how you just. That's kind of how you disarm Lydia. Mm -hmm. So then you say, like, you know what? I, you know, I do love him. I see a future. I see potential. So I really would like you to understand. You don't have to agree, but I would like you to understand and let me let this play out. 
then Lydia could have come back like, you know, Nicole, you're my you're my only daughter. I love you. I'm very protective. I've gone through this. It was a struggle. I don't want to see you make the same mistakes. While I don't support your decision, I do support you. See, you're you're rationalizing this as if this was real and this wasn't concocted by Lydia and Karen. Um right, I know. <laughs> I, I, I gotta do, I, but we have to like, we have to like, on our channel, we are a reality TV commentary channel, but the way we do our commentary yeah. is we, comment, we commentate on what we see, not about what we think. Now, we want to talk about what we think behind the scenes. We all know, <laughs> Karen called up Lydia and said, look, this is what we got going on. We need, we need you to make this episode um live because we ain't got much going on over here we, facebook alone cannot save this episode so you know what you gotta do Lydia's like okay i got oh you oh my god <laughs> yeah of, of the two countries i was really digging um dr for, for the yes. interactions between the mother and right. daughter dynamic totally for the agree. food i was all in in the philippines yeah i was like i just come back for a couple of plates, y'all. But what you doing? Don't worry about that. Oh my God, that pig roast looked is so good. Yeah. But see, I like I like pork. So when mm -hmm. winter said like when winter said like oh like I don't like pork. That's okay. I'm I could have eaten his. Right. I'll eat, just just put it on your plate and I'll take your yeah. plate. Yeah, because I don't want to be one. that embarrassed right. when I go back for like the tenth time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Weren't you just up here? No, that was somebody else. I would have been like, I'll trade out my rice for your pork and give me some of mm -hmm. that that blood thing going on. I want to try right. some of that. I want to try all the sap. Oh, wait. They said they had no vegetables. Score. No vegetables. Right. Oh, my God. But to go back to DR so we can finish oh. up there, like I said, oh. to me, in both, in both countries, there wasn't much there. But for DR, like, Carnival looked kind of cool. Um, Carnival was nice. It was different. It was really cool. It like we have carnival in Barbados. It's called Crop Over, and we do costumes as well. Um, but all their costumes looked very similar. Like they looked like they were like all devils or something. Like he was wearing the devil rooster or something. Yeah, mythical. Looked, she said they were mythical creatures. So, I'm, oh, okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm assuming like they dress up as like mythical creatures from their country's folklore. That's that's the way I took it. Mm. That's the way I took it. Then that gets well. I guess every year you can recycle the same costume. Mm -hmm. Cost savings. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and hey, I knew... hi, um, hi FM, hi Jenny M, Ryan, Blood Lavender. Um, I knew that they were gonna stiff us on the ring thing, and that's why I'm a little pissed. Mm-hmm. They're saving that for the end, but I think, like, I, quite honestly, this is just personally me, I could not accept a ring, furthermore, be in a relationship with somebody who is already married. I know he's Agreed. separated. I know Agreed. he's separated. Agreed. But a ring is a part of a commitment that you need to be making when you are free and exactly. unencumbered by obligations like another exactly. marriage certificate. Like, yee, I think that's exactly. pushing it. Hey, Montana. Hey, Willow. Hi. So that, and I knew they were going to jip us on that. I just had a feeling. So I didn't even yeah. want to talk about it. So boring. I mean, they all, we knew that. So I think for me, that, that section was tidy. Um, you know, there's a lot of unanswered questions. I like my hope is this. Okay, not hope. Here's what I think is probably going to happen, and this is where we can get into a little bit of speculation based on what we see. Mm -hmm. So we know they're looking for a season three. That's why Alejandro's proposing. So what's going to happen is, is possibly like they go into season three. Um, they're still engaged. Like you know, they're getting into the wedding planning process, and then they, they pull a Britney on us, and he's not really divorced because he filed the paperwork wrong, or not at all. Mm. So we like submit, like we submit. We haven't seen no divorce paperwork until so they went to Jenny. Him and Jenny went to the um to the lawyer's office. Alejandro, you said you filed. 
He ain't seen no paperwork. Did he say he filed? I thought he only said he, he separated. Filed. He said he filed. He told um, he I think he last this episode at the end he said he filed. Yeah. He could be the next submit. <laughs> yeah. Being in the cold for eight years. Oh my god. I. It is a good setup for season three. I'll give you that. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be yep. surprised if, um, what's her name? Anjanette comes back. Like they go through the wedding over there. They come back to Atlanta and she gets pregnant, but they still have more problems. Right. I can see that happening. But speaking of Anjanette, I do want to look, we can slide on over to, um, to the people in the, in the, in the Philippines yeah. because I'm like with Royal on this one to a degree. Like, I asked you not to do this. You decided to do this. Please leave. I was agreeing with his attitude, but then, okay. That's how we ended off last week. He comes into mm -hmm. this week's episode, same attitude. But did you find that Anne Jeanette was flipping back and forth? Like, when they were in the room discussing it, she was like, you have to kick your family out. Then they get down to the taxi um, when they're taking the van to the to her home for the, the evening party. And she's like, oh, Royal, you don't have to be so bad. And then they get to the party and she's like, kick them out. She's just so confusing. She's very reactionary. But... I can't blame it on a language barrier anymore. No, she, she's, she's reactionary. Confusing. She's very reactionary. She, she, how, what's done to her is how she automatically feels. If that makes sense, like when someone's cool to her and nice, she she reciprocates, and she's the same thing when someone's mean to her. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Um, what else? What was with, first of all, why was Karen wearing white? Second of all, why was Karen and Chantal both in like evening gowns? Right. I love Chant um, Anjanette's family who said they look like they going to the prom. Right. I thought, I'm like, I'm like, not to be rude, but you're going to like a family function. Um, in the, like in the rural areas of the Philippines. Why do you need to wear cocktail attire? That I, confused me. I maybe maybe they read the invitation wrong. Like the first thing that I would have been asking, what's the dress code? Like, can I wear shorts? Because I'm sure the right. Philippines is hot. So it, that like, was my thing. <laughs> Can I wear shorts? And it had to be because by the end of the night, both Chantel's and Karen's um, wigs, weaves, units, whatever, were frizzing out. It yeah. was hot. And I am I would have taken that opportunity to wear something normal. It is a pre-wedding event. It's not the actual event. I'm serious. They could have, like, they could have come in like literally literally a nice light blouse, some shorts and some tennis shoes and no one would have noticed. No no one would have cared. Yeah. They were looking at, they were looking at them like where are you going? And I'm one of those people who thinks that you really shouldn't wait wear white to any uh, wedding event. No. But why would you wear white you're required. outdoors? That killed well, me. Like, why are you white outdoors? In like, the pillow the talk, Annie said something very true. She's like, you're going to have a lot of chicken poop and dirt on the bottom of your pretty dress. And it's true. Like, yeah. I, I come, like, my mother's family comes from the country in Barbados. And basically, like, yeah, you know, I don't wear good shoes because. Mm. It's rough terrain. I yeah. wear flip flops. I wear sneakers. Um, you know, not saying that it's underdeveloped, but 
you know, if you want to go down to the sea, you got to go through the gully and down the hill and, you know, and that's the shortcut. That's not paved road. Exactly. <laughs> it was just no. weird to me. All right, so do we want to go on to like to like the little main event or because I have oh, a few yes, little yes, things. Yes. So mm-hmm. one, I wouldn't have done that. You don't do that at someone's home. And not you're at a party. And not at a party. Wrong place, wrong time. And then you basically accost her, knowing she doesn't really speak English that well, if at all. Mm-hmm. And Jeanette did the right thing. You know, she came off defensive. I understood why. And she translated. And then, like, you could see the mom get uncomfortable. And I felt bad. I really felt bad for her. And then Mm -hmm. then Jeanette got upset. And then Karen and Chantal made me mad because they're acting like they did nothing wrong. Like, what they were doing was right. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you're you're completely inappropriate. You have no no self-awareness. And I'd ask you to leave, too. Royal, I like Royal's ass. He came over like, basically, why did you do this? We asked you not to, and you did anyway. And they kept saying they're trying to defend what they did and got offended when they at, were asked to leave, which was the right thing to do. And then what killed me when they got back to the hotel room, I guess, Karen was telling like, I'm going to need an apology. So I'm like, <laughs> you've lost your mind. An apology for what? The humidity shrunk her wig. I don't know. The circulation was cut off to all of their brains. Um, I don't get it. I I don't get why they are so self-righteous. You know, from Chantal saying, I think all these people came out to look at the Americans. Well, if you look like walking freak shows, yeah, they did. Mm-hmm. Um you were rude about the food. You were rude to your host. And then oh. you want an apology when you're evicted from the event and uninvited to the wedding. Exactly. Really? Really? That's why this, 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 why, this, why I think that for me, I'm not sure if it was for you. This is why this episode for me was, it was okay, but it was very straightforward. You know what I mean? The Philippines was disappointing for me. Yeah. With their behavior, like sometimes you, you, like, don't they ever think that they want to showcase their family as being mannerly? Like, I yes. don't get it. In the river, I'm like you. I'm like river. You always open your mouth at the wrong time. Be quiet. You need to think. No, he's thinking. In this instance, Royal is thinking correctly. You're the one who's thinking incorrectly. So go sit down somewhere. And these people, like, they, they, they opened their arms. Like, not just her family, but the entire village. The whole village. They were all excited. I thought that that was, like, so supportive of Anjanette and her family. Like, she's getting married. We want to be a part of her happiness. Then they made her cry. And then we find out that that's bad luck. Wow. Yeah, that, I felt bad. I'm like, we're going to sage everybody. It was just, it was just dumb. Did you it was see just the, dumb. Did you see the clips for next week and what these idiots are wearing? Yeah, I was like, okay. Oh my god! I'm like, no. Overall, this episode was it was tidy. Like this is one of those episodes. Like if we were honest, they didn't need the whole hour. They could fit this into mm-hmm. like 45 minutes or so. I mean, if we're being honest, I. I wonder if that means that they're going to cram so much into the last episode. Because next week is the last episode. I know. So I'm kind of, like, I'm really looking forward to these poppet dresses that that uh, the Chantel family is going to be wearing. Um, but, yeah, like, I feel like next week is going to be, like, a whirlybird of, of mess in both countries. Okay. Both countries, yeah. Oh my God, I've got sad star, sad star podcast in the background. Want to um, want to bring her up? I think we're good. Yeah, Unless we want, we, 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 want, we, want, we can talk a little bit about Mama's Boy because I think in both episodes, in mm-hmm. both shows, there, were, there wasn't too much there. Like everything was pretty straightforward. Is the big thing. 
Did I take any notes on Mama's Boy? I just remember, like, this show is just irritating the snot out of me. Um, I, I'm really upset at the guy that lives with, um, that wants to convert the garage into a home. I want, I'm really I want, upset with that. I want him to leave him. Hmm? I want Kim to leave him. You're talking about Matt. Yes, yes. I. That's what I want to. Because this is like ridiculous. How are you inviting your mother onto your romantic getaway trip with your girlfriend and say it'll be fun? Right. How so? In what dimension? Right. Oh. And then who else stood out for me? Emily and and um Shakib. Shakib. I don't know why they expected a better response from his mom by springing right. Emily on on exactly. on her. And then like Emily, you could tell she's real young. I don't ever throw down ultimatums unless I'm prepared to walk away. And I really don't think she's prepared to walk away. No, she's um, gonna keep running. Yeah, so I I although I would love for that relationship to um to develop, I don't think it has a chance in hell. It really I think, doesn't. I really think they're my favorite mm -hmm. couple alongside Justina and Jason. And Jason. Oh, okay. She had that sit down with with his mom. I don't think it did a hella difference. And does she have rosacea? Because every time that she's up to wickedness, her face turns completely red. The mom? The mom. I think she might. It's just like, whoa. Um, I think the mom is like super, super wrong when she was trying to pick that girl wedding dress, trying to pick her accessories, trying to pick the, the groom's... Um, uh, tuxedo, trying to pick the venue. Honestly, it's not your wedding. Step back. Like, are you like, wait, I have to find out if she's paying for it, then yes, she has a say. But if she's not, she needs to take several, several, several seats. I don't think she's, there's been no illusion, no like, inclination that she's paying for the whole thing. So my whole thing is this. I have an issue when people want to do things for your child and you're setting boundaries for your child and then you're going to do what you want to do. When they were rewarding their daughter by getting her one toy, mm -hmm. that's good. That's the boundaries they're setting. The grandmother wanted to buy her another toy. They said, no, you need to buy by what the parents say. Because even you, yeah. even you, even the whole argument in front of the daughter <laughs> is letting the daughter know, like, oh, if mom and dad say no, I can go to grandma. She'll do what I want to do. Yeah. And that's a bad, yeah. that's a bad thing to start with a child that young. Yeah. Well, it, I just wonder if anybody could have interfered with her parenting when she mm -hmm. was parenting her children. Why would she think she could do that to somebody else? And I know she's saying, well, I'm the grandma. And and like there's that old saying, like, you know, grandparents spoil the kids and send them home or whatever. Like, no. Like you don't interfere in anybody else's parenting style. Mm -hmm. Like I, I I've had I've held that a belief from like with my brother and his wife and my nephew. Like he's like, you know, you could you could you could discipline them. I'm like, I'm not disciplining. Mm -hmm. them. That's not my kid. So, like, what, you do, uh -uh. what you do is gonna be a problem. Yep. So basically, I've always been of the opinion this is what he did, you deal with it. Yeah. You know, um God, like I just feel like like she's very intrusive to me, and I'm not even involved in that relationship. Right. She's very, like, very uncomfortably intrusive. And then when mm -hmm. her face turns color, it's just, like, I feel, I feel awful watching that. It's super uncomfortable. Agreed. It's just a train wreck. She's, she's ridiculous. And her crying at the store, I'm like, yeah, I, I walked out and left you. Do you wish... 
Justine would be more assertive with her? Or do you think she's playing the right cards by staying, like holding back her tongue and just letting this woman do what she I wants? think she's doing the best she can because she doesn't seem like a naturally assertive person. But I think at this point, you've sat down with the mother. Mm -hmm. I think should things keep happening, you have to sit down with them both and really put it out there. It's like I've tried I tried talking to you one on one. You're not getting it. Now I'm going um, now I'm gonna just let you have it in front of your son and then we're gonna we're gonna do what we're gonna do. That's my thing. She she she's ha she handled herself the right way mm -hmm. during the one on one. I get what she, I get where she was coming from. I just she's trying that's to long overdue though. She was trying to build a bridge. It, it is, but she's. But the thing is, though, we have to realize though, she's now getting the support of her husband, her soon to be husband, where she wasn't really getting that before, where he would side okay. with the more with the mother. But now that he's spoken, I was like, when Jason's at the toy up, store, I was like, mm -hmm. right? I was like Jason. and it wasn't just once; it was no. multiple times he had her back. I'm like, come through, mm -hmm. Jason. This is this is what your wife needs. That's why she felt real com confident in speaking with the mom one on one. I was mm -hmm. so happy to see him do that for her. So that's the that's the main difference. That's the biggest difference. He now she feels she knows she has the support. So I'm happy. Unlike Kim, who has no support from Matt, and she needs to leave. Yes, yes, like that. That relationship is a little bit too close for my comfort. And I'm not even involved in that relationship. Like that relationship is very scary to me. To me, it's not so much as that. It's so it's it's here's the thing. This is a situation where it's more the the son is more the more dependent on the mother. Mm -hmm. This is the one that stands out the most. It's him. Um, like if you know, it's like all the other all the other sons have try to step up against mm -hmm. their mothers and let them like hey this is my girlfriend wife this is this is who, i got her back he has not done that with kim yet that's why she is frustrated she needs to leave because he wasn't under what he or he didn't want to get is this what she is saying is that when you and i agree on things and your mom disagrees you need to go with what we have decided not side with your mother. And he, but he was thinking like, oh, well, we should like listen to her and to her advice and her opinion. It's like, she's like, no, you're not getting it. It's when we decide as a couple what we're going to do, we will go through with that. I thought she was like dead wrong because she was, she Who? was arguing over the, the girlfriend. She's arguing over house knickknacks or, or style design of a That's house. That's not what it's about. That's no, not what's but, about. but she has ceded all control to 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 his mom. Like, why right. are you arguing over that? But it's like, not about that though. But this I is, just cool. don't even get it. I do. They like I I am at the point of who are you in bed with at night? Where are you gonna right. get your puss from? Like right. so, th these like these little arguments that she's nitpicking at. She should realize that she ain't never gonna win. This is, where I'm, this is where I'm getting to right now. The way she, the, what's coming out now about these little things is like she's still trying to fight for some sort of control. So this is a buildup of everything from before. And it's, it's just coming out in like in pettiness, in petty ways. She needs to understand at this point that she needs to walk away. This is the one couple that I wish would dissolve. Uh-huh. But this is the one. I don't understand how she thinks she ha has a chance of winning anything living in that woman's house. Mm -hmm. You 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 don't even have your own ground to stand on at this point. That woman controls everything. Mm -hmm. She even controls your sex life. Mm -hmm. It's just sad. And there's so many red flags being thrown here. Like 
she has to have a savings account. She need, she need mm -hmm. to run away. She just need yeah. like go the friend that she um that she was video chatting with. Danielle. Like, yeah, she could go and sleep on that girl floor. Right. Or an air mattress or something. Like she can call, she can call, she can call, she can call Sheree Latre. You still got some air mattresses? I'm telling you. I couldn't. I couldn't be in her position. I just Neither. couldn't. And even if I was in my 20s, young, dumb, and 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 stupid, I could not be in that position. Right. Because she, I think what she's not understanding. And I felt bad for her, but she needs to come to the conclusion and understanding that he has told you multiple times who's going to come first. Multiple times. So at this point, he showed you multiple times. I blame you at this point because you continue to stay around for them. Yeah. Yeah. That's my thing. And then with Shaquille, you don't spring Emily, her arch nemesis, on her like that and expect a good response. Like I said, I would love for this relationship to move forward. I think Emily is a good um, is a good fit for Shakib. She is, but but I fear for Emily, and mm -hmm. I don't like using ultimatums in Never. relationships. I just don't think it ever comes out well for either party mm -hmm. and people hold grudges yes because i know i do if you throw down an ultimatum at me i hold on to that i'll well, tell I you i got over it but i'm mm -hmm. still holding on to it my thing is with ultimatum i tend to do the opposite just to spite you <laughs> just 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 not to give in to you like you're gonna make you gonna tell me what i need to do Oh, okay. I'm gonna do this, and I'll I'll just keep doing it until you back down. That's but just I, me, though. I think it's a good lesson for Emily to learn, um, because I agree with her mom. Who's mom? I think um, Emily's mom. Emily's mom, right, right, right. I think that there's a great doctor or attorney in her future, because mm -hmm. what is it that Shakib does? I have no clue. I forgot. Right. Is he like a party promoter or something? Well, DJ something? I don't know. I'm with Emily's mom. Mm -hmm. I want her to find somebody better. I don't care yeah. where they're from or what background they have. I want her to find somebody better where she's not always stressed. Yes. Um. She, I agree with her mom. She deserves better, Way um, better. and that's the only thing that I agree with with her. You know, mom the bad thing is, though, I actually mm -hmm. like. Shaquib. I, I think do. he's cool, mm -hmm. but I just think he. It's just I'm just so like. Then this was the couple I would say I was probably rooting the most for. Like, right. a, I was like, mm -hmm. you can do it. Okay, DJ. Okay, that's what I thought too. Then hell but, no. But mm -hmm. I was like. I'm like, oh, but they diagnostic. Mm -hmm. And who's the last couple? Is there another couple? Kim and Matt, Shakiba and Emily, Justin and Jason. There's another couple. Oh, Stephanie and Mike. Oh, boring. Yeah, okay, that's why I knew I was forgetting somebody. So we can skip them because they didn't do nothing. Yeah, they were. Quarantining at home. Quarantine. I think, and I think, um, I think Stephanie might need to run too. But Mike is Mike is coming around, but he needs to take that key. Up. He needs to take that key away from his mother, though. I feel like Stephanie. It, like remember that old um, Glenn Close movie um, where she boiled the bunny. I feel like Stephanie's going to wind up being uh, um, fatal attraction. Fatal attraction. Yes. I feel Stephanie's gonna wind up being the bunny. Yeah, JC Bear. Um, the mom has a key to the apartment. They went to go get some ski stuff waxed. She came in while they were gone, threw away her birthday flowers, cut her balloon, and started peeking up the, around the house. And vacuuming. And like, vacuuming. Going through all they stuff. <sighs> you know she did, because I would have yeah. done it. <laughs> right? 
she then, should have found a big double donger like jumbo vibrator in in deep dark black sticking out from under the bed. Like that's what she should have found. You go digging well, that and find. What, what, what Stephanie should have done, and this is messy, but hey, what she should just like if he's not gonna take away the mom's key, what you do is like especially on this because she seems to come over on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. I think it's Saturday. What you do is like you send him out, right? Like, oh, I just gonna clean up a little bit. Um, when want your mom to come in and blah blah blah. And then what you do, what you do, you put some like quote unquote unmissionable stuff mm -hmm. on your bed, on the on the um, on the dresser, to where you know she's gonna see it. I will put a full on strap on so that she know who getting pegged when the night come. Yeah. Just put it right on the bed. Mm -hmm. leave a, don't put it in the center. You leave it askew just mm -hmm. so it doesn't look staged. And I would make it, um, I would put something on it that makes it sticky so that yeah. when she touches it, she thinks right. she's she's touching right. her. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I, I would teach you not to snoop or come in, come in when we're not here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh if you notice, when she went to go into the apartment, she did not. She just used her key. Yep, she just walked right in. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. So are we ready for, for Sad Star? Oh yeah, of course. Okay, here we go. Hello, Sad Star. Hey guys. Hi. Holy shit. Hi. You guys have been talking for a long time. I know. Oh we, my God. We, we, squeezed in, we squeezed in an extra show. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so I haven't watched um, I Love a Mama's Boy in a while, to be mm -hmm. honest. But let me tell you something. I love Kim and Shakib. And let me tell you why. I talked to Kim. She's the sweetest, most cute, amazing, amazing, wholesome person to ever exist. Like, she's she's so nice to the point that she wouldn't leave. She wouldn't leave. Um, what's his name, Matt? Matt. But she needs to realize that Matt is gay. It's not even a question anymore, honey. He is. Period. We all know it. The moment his mom decided to buy the same rope as um, Kim for Valentine's Day, I was like, I'm not watching the show anymore. I need to like skip over the show for a while, and yeah, I need to. To, like to keep it moving now for Shakib Shakib is a good friend of mine we were just talking like yesterday about weed <laughs> <laughs> and um, I said this in the first episode that I've ever made about Shakib and his mom and I think I'm spot on Emily's much younger than Shakib she's very uh, significantly younger than Shakib and mm -hmm. apparently he's the first real relationship that she's ever had, a serious relationship. Wow. And the girl is just, you know, when you're really young and in love and you're like, oh, my God, mm -hmm. I, I found the one from the very start. I think Emily is under that spell, to be honest with you. Now, the mama, that, that mom that was cutting the balloons and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I have not watched that, but you guys throw that whole mom in the trash. I'm sorry. <laughs> really, really, just throw her in the trash. Stephanie, you could get better. I, why would you even date a guy that... Listen, I saw Matt on the episodes, and I saw Matt on Instagram. On the episode, he looks like a Matt... No, like, no, no, what's his name? Mike, Mike, he looks Mike. like Mike in the episode, but he looks like Antonio or Alejandro or Fernando on Instagram. He looks Latin. That's how much Photoshop he does. Like, oh. girl, why would you? Yeah, he looks like a Latino with the tan and the muscles and this everything. He looks like a snack, to be honest, but come on now. His mm -hmm. mom is a big turn off. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, I wanted to just say something about Shakib and his mom. I, you know, after talking to Shakib, I kind of get where his mom is coming from. His mom is a very, very, very traditional lady. And to be honest, I have the same type of mom, kind of. 
to be to be fair like i i understand where he's coming from like he cannot date everybody like where i come from i have to date just no i have to marry not even date i have to marry a good muslim man um and he has to be a doctor because i'm also gonna be a doctor and you know it's they when you're born they already have this your life they plan your life for you so when mm -hmm. emily came in it's like Emily's not there. Like you, Shakib is supposed to marry an Af a good Muslim Afghanistani wife that his mom likes, that his family likes, and she has to have this job. She has to look like a certain way. She has to act a certain way. That's how our lives are built. Like where Shakib comes from and where I'm, where I come from. So um, wait, was oh. his first marriage um, to what? you're describing like was she an afghani girl that was the same religion same she culture, was everything? she was the perfect wife that in his mom's like, eyes oh. she was yeah he told me about her um I, I think he also told me that she's already married now she's living a good oh, life oh, with a new yeah. husband um and she, apparently she was the perfect wife his mom adored her because his it's like his mom saw herself into this younger virgin of mm. her you know what i mean Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, man. It's it's. Why did they, they break should, up? They, I don't know. They didn't. So his, his wife was the perfect girl in his mom's eyes, but mm -hmm. she wasn't the perfect girl for Shakib. They were married, I think, for a year or a little bit more than a year, and then they just got divorced. You know, I, I'm glad they had the option to get divorced because a lot of people they don't have that option. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Layla was okay with that? Um, I don't think, I don't really know about Layla because I, um, I didn't ask about what her opinion about the divorce. Because, you know, I didn't want to pry mm -hmm. way too much. But maybe she didn't like that, you know? Because if, if, I, if I'm coming from where Layla sees this, maybe that divorce in her eyes might look like her husband no, no her son is like missing out on the perfect girl like you're losing the perfect girl you know what i mean maybe she thinks like that at least that's what i believe you know what i mean who else were we talking about mm, um um kim and matt um and jason and just justina Okay, so yeah. small update. Small mm -hmm. update. Matt and Kim are still together. Um, they're still living oh in his God. bedroom. Yes, the one that we saw where they wake up and his mom gives him the coffee and doesn't say hello to Kim. That same bedroom. Um, Kim, Kim, honey, you deserve better. I love you. You're wholesome. You're beautiful. You're literally a, like a big piece of sunshine and you need to find someone who's better than that come on girl it, he massages his mama's feet in a perverted way i mean trey was in the comments and she was like i would never get moist to someone who does that and i like same that doesn't turn me on <laughs> honestly i would have to teach that mother a lesson Okay, so if I realize that every morning at seven o'clock she's strolling in there with a cup of coffee for him and not not saying good morning to me or bringing me anything, not that I would eat from her, but I would be riding his dangalang every morning starting at six fifty five a.m. because I'll give him at least ten minutes. And to be honest with you, let her walk in and see that. <laughs> or better yet, I would have him in a ball gag and 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 doing something disgusting to him so that she could walk in and see that. Uh, even better, peg him. Peg him right then and exactly. there. Exactly. Right then and there. He wants it. Yeah, put him in a cock <laughs> harness, like put the biggest plug in his ass, like ball gag him, like take him to Candy's dungeon. Don't do that. I know we living in your house, but my you know, God. With the, the leather mask, the leather mask where you, you put it on the person who's getting like pegged and you cover all of their faces and their nose and everything. Mm -hmm. Put him in that like leather mask and just go to town on him. Just go to town. And when his mom enters, let her see everything. Every single oh thing. <laughs> oh, oh my God. God. She doesn't think that the mom would care. Well, then, then you ask what? if you want to join. 
I've got a oh whip my for you. I got a paddle with your name on it and actually produce a paddle with her name on it. Oh my God. You and know, if she maybe... joins in, I I would know exactly where I stand. Not that I didn't know from before, but <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And there was the one one person that I did not keep up on the show, um, mm -hmm. keep up with on the show is um, Colty 2.0 and the lady, his 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 fiance. That's literally um, there's a word for it. She's a, a she's a doormat. Yeah, she's a doormat. Justina, I think Jason that's her name. Justina? Oh um, yeah, I. She has doormat tendencies, but I like the the sit down that she had with the mom, with his mom. I wish she was a bit more firm. That's uh, why she's a doormat, because she's not firm. That's the point. But at least she said to her, our wedding is what it is. When we make the final decisions, we'll let everybody know. But our wedding is what it is. I just want to know who's paying for that wedding so I can uh, yeah, calculate and, my words. And that's why I'm I'm being very cautious with what I'm saying because then if his mom is paying towards that wedding, even if it's a five cent, she can say her five cent worth. Okay, I can agree to that. Mm -hmm. But to be honest with you, Debbie, do you have kids? No. No, mm -hmm. no. Okay, let's say you have kids. Mm -hmm. Okay, and those kids, like for example, you have a son and he's getting married, and you're paying for the wedding. Mm -hmm. You f would definitely be involved. Definitely, absolutely, be involved. But you know, getting involved in someone, something like this, has limits. There is limits to everything. Because mm -hmm. again, it's not your wedding; it's their wedding. This mom doesn't understand that, and her face. When it changes colors, it pisses me off. It literally yeah. pisses me the fuck off. It makes me angry. It's However, like, if she has rosacea, she, she can't control that. But if she is like boiling mad and her face is turning um, pink and red because of that, because she's so angry, um, then she has control of that. Because stop getting angry, lady. Some people, I, I just want to explain something to you. Some people with like really round faces have, or like especially with people who are a little bit bigger on the bigger side, mm -hmm. they have like smoother, like the skin tends to be a little bit more elastic and a little bit more translucent sometimes. Mm -hmm. Now, when the blood flows when you're angry, it shows that you're really red. So whether that's <clears throat> rosacea or just her anger issues and she wants to let it out on someone mm -hmm. i'm not very sure like i cannot um i cannot really say that wait does she have like um pimples a lot of pimples on her face have anyone noticed that i haven't i i, I only really noticed this when they were dress shopping I, I didn't Same. really notice it before, but when, when they were um, all sitting down, the sisters, her daughter and her, um, and she was hearing about the, the camp venue for the, for the wedding, the campsite, like mm. she just got so red. I never noticed it before that. And then this episode again at the uh, toy store and at the one-on-one the -on -one with, um, with Justina, yeah. Again, the, the 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 face became inflamed, and I don't know if it's a medical condition or if it's just her 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 way of expressing anger. Because yeah. usually rosacea looks like it it can differ. Like it can look like blood vessels that are very clear and red. Sometimes mm -hmm. it usually looks like acne, and if mm -hmm. it doesn't look like acne, the skin has a text a pumpy texture. Mm -hmm. But like sometimes it's, it's red, sometimes it doesn't, but you can realize it. If that lady doesn't have a texture on her skin, that lady has issues. That's it. <laughs> That's all she has. 
I don't know. Yeah. I, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt um, at this point. Um, oh dear, we have we we have a Blavi joining us. Oh hell Hi. yeah, get in here. Hey, a Blavi. <laughs> um, I didn't watch a Mama's Boy because I have enough of that on night day right now. But mm -hmm. <laughs> any thoughts on Chantel? Actually, yes. That's the only reason I called him. Yeah, okay. segue. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. What Antoine and okay, Antoinette is the mother. Mm -hmm. And Jeanette is the daughter. Now, mm -hmm. okay, I would have done what Ch Chantel did. When I go to weddings, and I guess that's just an American thing, I'm not like I was looking at River, I was like, aren't you a little dressed down? But I see that the culture is different, but you need to tell people, hey. This is a, you know, this is not formal. This is informal, you know? I hate when mm -hmm. people invite you to something and they don't tell you how to dress. I'll agree with you on that. Mm -hmm. Like, But, I, really but I always ask, too. Like, I, I don't want to stick out, especially if I'm going someplace that I've never been before and I don't know where it is I'm going. I'll always say, hey, is it okay? Now, where they should have got slapped was... You, they know good and well you don't wear any color close to white at somebody's reception, unless it's a white wedding. Yes, unless you got instructions saying we need everybody to wear this color. Um, I agree with you on on that. But yeah, I don't know. I just want to make something. Oh, or should I go on? Who should go? You on? go on. Okay, so I just want to make some things very clear. About the, the whole gathering in the Philippines and the rural areas, I was I also knew like people from the Philippines. And from what I understood is that the Filipino culture or um, like traditions is that when you have a wedding in a specific area, everybody's invited. Mm. Every single person is invited. Everybody is gathering. It's like it's a wedding is a happy occasion. And it's better when you share it with a lot of people. So it's like a community coming together for this wedding or this happy occasion. It does, I don't think it's only Anjanette's wedding that they came to. Probably if there's another wedding in the same area, everybody would also go there. And that's why there was a lot of people. Now, from Anjanette's reaction, I don't know if she told Royal's family that it's a, it's a casual wedding or if it's a formal wedding but from the way that Chantel and um, her mom were trifling I think that they already know that it was a very like it's a casual reception but they went dressed up anyway now let me tell you something going to somewhere like that dressed up like to the nines I understand that. I understand you want to stand out. But at, at some point, stand out just looks like you're just being a clown. They went there. Instead of standing out, they stood out, but just as clowns, period. That's all I saw. I mean, they were dressed like clowns. Um, Karen had her uh, side, uh, the side of her bra showing. What the fuck was that? <laughs> well, I mean, this I, is the thing, though. Speaking as somebody that we share similar cultures, with African-American people, there is no such thing as not dressing up for a wedding. There's no such thing as not dressing up for church. So that could be lost in translation because I'm not going to a wedding in T-shirt. I don't care how informal it is. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody in the chat is saying this wasn't the wedding. We, we know, like, we're just saying the wedding weekend when you have multiple events that lead up to yeah. the actual ceremony. We're just generalizing it and calling it the wedding because it's part of the weekend. So, yeah, because I'm we, not, we realize. Like, I agree not, with Ablavi. I I'm agree not, with Ablavi. I, if I was going to such a, an occasion in such a place. I would wear a dress, a very cute dress, a very nice dress. I would make sure my hair is done, my nails are done. But I would not go wearing a long white dress looking like Chantel and her mom when people around me are like that, period. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, again, I ask those questions. 
because I would have wanted to have been comfortable and fit in on that evening and I was would have been going someplace that I had never been before. So I mm. would have asked Anjanette and then I would have looked at what she was wearing. And but she was a lot more formal than anybody else. Well, she's the bride. Yeah, exactly. I, would, I, yeah. I would have taken into account what she was wearing and not wear something that outshined her. Like I would not have been putting on sequence after seeing Anjanette in a pretty little burgundy cocktail dress. I'd have been like, oh, be, okay. I can to be honest with you. If, color. if I was invited to that wedding and they told me that everybody's gonna be that dressed down, I would have put on my Pokemon pajamas and walked into that wedding very, looking very normal. Gina That's Maxie what I mean. Did something good here because I thought they did go dress shopping. They did, but that was for the formal wedding. That's for the second one. So he, why he, did they show up in the clips? It looks like they're like like puppets. Like why are they wearing those dresses? Because they're they're the teaser. <laughs> Let's talk about the teaser dresses. They they I think they try to be traditional. So like they went to the shop. Remember she didn't go with them. So they picked whatever they liked. <laughs> oh, this was the one where she No! <laughs> you pick dresses that don't look like this. <laughs> I'm saying that was Antoinette's fault because she's leaving them mixed messages. She told them to go to the dress shop and she didn't go with them. Wait, uh, we're talking about the second day. Yeah, right? the second day. Uh, yeah, next week's episode. Okay, okay. I wanna ask I wanna ask Avlavia a question. Girl. If you were invited to that wedding and you got mixed messages and you went into a shop, would you buy those dresses? No, but I have had a pr friend with the wedding and I'm so embarrassed she made me do this. She made us go as Southern debutantes in the 1800s as her oh, wedding no. theme. And that's what we had to wear as bridesmaids dresses. And it was very similarly, ridiculously ugly. I'm sorry, girl. <laughs> And the dress was $500. Dang. That, okay, sad star, I'm gonna drop you down for a second. We've got someone else in the in the back room. Hold on and I'll bring you back up at the end of the show, okay? Okay, okay. All right, hold on. Hi, Gatatua. Hi. Hi, how are Hi. you? Hi. Good. Hi, Jamal. Hey, what's going on? I'm good. Today I come in peace. I have no, I have no, uh, auntie has gone on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> so you, I had not, I didn't watch this episode, but the way you were talking about the dress code and everything, I had to go and get a clip and look at them. And um, I think that was a pre-wedding party or cocktail thing or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's generalizing. No, yeah, that's what that's, I, 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 mm. and I, and I agree with all of you. That's what I'm saying. Even at a pre-wedding, because we have those. Even at a pre-wedding party, mm -hmm. even at a, the most basic, which is an introduction for us, mm -hmm. we dress up. You have to meet your tailor. You have to go to your tailor and tell your tailor to hook you up because you have an event coming up. Mm -hmm. And even if the party is like for, as the way I said about uh, Indians or Somali weddings for about seven days, each day you have to be dressed up. And some mm -hmm. days is not much happening, but each day you have to be dressed up. Then um, why would you wear heels when you're going to somewhere where the road does not allow you to walk in, he in heels? Oh, I know. Oh. That didn't make sense to me, unless you want to break your feet. Can we be messy? Yes. I was getting kind of upset with the wedding. I hope the actual wedding is good because if Andre got that type of wedding, he should get a good wedding too. So I hope the actual wedding and, and the reception after looks nice. Yeah, and then, I, I don't know, like, then also the other thing about confronting someone during such an event when other people, like people from my whole village are in the vicinity, that wasn't cool. Like, you don't make the bride-to-be cry in front of that. I think they would have done it, like, post the, 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 the cocktail thing. That, then they could have done their confrontations there. I think Karen and her entourage just need to be put somewhere you can send them to us. We can put them in some, um, we can put them in a van, send them to a safari or something. Then maybe they will have some sense. Because if it was me, I'm sorry, we would only be apologizing for the door not having kicked them on their butt on their way out. I don't know. Um, 
I'm just sick and tired of Karen and her brood making Americans look really bad on national TV. I'm sorry. It's yeah. Just so uncalled for. It was. It was. And um I don't know. But I I, I liked I I I liked her oh I love you always cooking something when I see you. <laughs> Yeah, I made lobster mac and cheese. Oh, nice. <laughs> Just a little, you know, something, something. We'll but be over watch right after the show. <laughs> <laughs> but then the other thing is also, I thought they were told not to come for the wedding itself. But I'm seeing in the next uh, upcoming upcoming episode, they're going to the wedding. Of course they are. Yeah. Would it would it be wrong if I was Anjanette to have security at the door and tell them you are not invited and send them back? Would that be wrong? Is it wrong that I want somebody to object? Ah, oh, Blavi. <laughs> I thought they're already married. You're right, but like just for the theatrics, because I've always, always wanted to go to a wedding and see somebody object. My grandmother's going to one. My father's going to one. I've never seen it. I've always wanted to. Just to see what the pastor does. Normally, the pastor will put the, 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 the wedding on hold and then call the three people, the one objecting and the couple, to, the, um, to another room so that they try yeah. to figure out the mess. Then if it's true, the pastor comes back out and says, unfortunately, there won't be a wedding, but people can now proceed to the to the reception area to have a meal or something. But can we talk about Lydia? Lydia for the win. Lydia is a girl of the, now you know I roast her, but I gotta praise her when she's doing right. Lydia, for a minute there, I thought I was in the heights. When she grabbed that purse and started chucking it at Ella and I said, come on, Lydia, with the win. <laughs> I think we were all waiting for that because I, I wanted to see it come to some sort of blows or attempted blows. I think he deserved it. And I think she had a lot of pent up frustration about the whole situation, whether it was real or not. You know, I, I, I expect a Caribbean mother to swing a purse. Or a shoe, or or a shoe, a, a something. A shoe, Debbie. A shoe. Yeah. We would we would swing a shoe. If they're in my mother's generation, they're gonna pick up a rock and throw it at you. I but now the the thing is this: I have a question because I kept seeing people saying, "Oh, okay, fine. I like Alejandro. I like how he always makes an effort to look all put up, like um, as a spiky scarecrow or something." But here is my my question. How sure are we that he's actually in the process of a divorce? Because he keeps saying different things every time. First time is my, my divorce is on the way. Second time is um, we are separated. Third time is I have filed for divorce. Which is which? Exactly. And do we, think that, do we think that he's not actually going to get divorced? You are jumping ahead to season three. Stop it. <laughs> you know what? I saw Lydia on the computer. So I'm wondering if we're going to be with the private eye again that they all that they all always get, and she'd be like, "He is his wife and his children." Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I, I'm agreeing with Lydia because she's literally seeing her life flash back in front of her, her yes. eyes in, with Nicole now being the her, being her. Because I I don't know, like I'm thinking if I was Nicole and my mother was had us with a married man and we went through what we went through, I wouldn't even look at a married man. Like I wouldn't even look at the direction of a married man. I would want, like if you're married and you're saying you're divorced and everything, I would want you to stick that divorce paper on, on your forehead. So like before I even say hi to you, I'm already reading the terms of the divorce and everything. Well, no, that's not because if you were a child of that, Nicole might be really trying to recreate what her parents went through and trying to do well. So she's like, my father didn't stay for my mother, but he'll do it for me. You think he would? I think he's just having a good time with a young thing. I, that's what I feel. But can we talk about, I didn't feel bad for Nicole at all in this episode. Even at the salad scene where she was cutting up the salad, mm -hmm. I said, come on, Lydia. Reminds me of me with cooking, yes. And she was like, I'm not going to support this. And I love that because I find too many people support their children when they make poor decisions. 
I think it's Nicole hot. needs to learn a very hard lesson and some tough love needs to uh, be applied. And I think Lydia is the perfect person to do it to her. I have for Jamal. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's up? <clears throat> do you Hello? think she be... Uh-oh. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Can you we hear me? Can hear, we can hear you, Jamal. I think it's okay. about to do um, her connection. Let me, and then I come back. That's okay. I don't know whether you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah. I'm frozen. No, go ahead, we can hear you. Okay, I'm saying, I'm asking Jamal, do you do you really think, because I think you, you, you're you better than the rest of us because you do your research, do you think really Alejandro is getting a divorce or he's in the process of getting one? Do you really think that's the case? Mm, so he said, he said he is, and I actually kind of looked, I tried to look up for it, like divorce, and I, I didn't see anything. So for me, I would go with that he it was for me it's more like he wants to get divorced but he hasn't filed yet I don't think and here's a reason why so when he first met with Pedro he said um yeah I'm married but I'm getting a divorce and then I think it was a confessional type thing he said like well you know my my wife was like we haven't been together in a while. She was cool with the divorce, but once I, once she found out I was dating Nicole, she like it became a problem. So when I go back to that statement, she, um, she has a problem. Does that mean that she's contesting the divorce? You haven't filed yet. What's going on there? So when I take that clip into co combined with what's going on. I'm going to say he wants to get divorced, but there's going to be some sort of hiccup with the divorce, and we'll see that next season. And then, um, do you also, I don't know, like, do you get the vibe that maybe he's, because I don't think he's Christian. I feel like he's Muslim, and when I look at his forehead every time, because I'm sorry, that's how most of the times we identify our Muslim brothers and uh, mostly, his forehead, has like a dark patch. Don't don't kill me, anyone. Don't kill me. I'm just saying. Like, if you want to identify a Muslim person off the top, you 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 see like a slight dark patch on the forehead. Do you think he's Muslim and he might just pull a uh, like maybe I can marry four wives sort of situation, or maybe do you think he's pulling um a summit on us? Like we we help him get a divorce, but ends up leaving Nicole either way. I mean, here's here, here, the way I look at it is this, like he as he's married he sh and he's been married i think he's been married over the allotment time so he has nothing to gain by lying in this situation like nicole can't do anything for him he's already in the states so that's why i'm, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt this time because he doesn't need nicole nicole needs nicole needs him because she wants to come to the state lydia's going to be contested all the way through no matter what because she doesn't want her her other child to leave her and run to the States. Here's what I think is happening. He's, I. this is something I know because I know somebody else that's doing it. When you get the K-1 visa, you get a green card, right? I don't think he's gone up for citizenship yet. So he can't, so he's not going to divorce his wife until he got citizenship. That's five years because he said that they were, at the fifth year, you can go for citizenship. So because he's in his fourth year, I think the reason he's staying married to his wife to get citizenship. After he gets his citizenship, he's still not going to divorce his wife. Why? Because he likes that. You can see it already. He's playing games. Because what kind of fool do you... I mean, this is like the Kim from Real, Real Housewives of Atlanta with that foolishness that a married <laughs> man is getting engaged. Like, what kind of mess is that? This is Kim 2.0. You know, remember when she was with Big Papa? 
Oh, I'm engaged to Big Papa. And when Nene said, you look crazy. He's still married. That's true. So I, I don't know. Like, I feel his story is not adding up. Like, I don't know. Maybe he wants to stay married for the visa, the citizenship. And uh, maybe he's true about uh, having intentions for Nicole. So I don't know. Like, I feel he's, there's something he's not telling us. Or maybe, he ha does he have children? Because I would, it would be awesome if he hadn't said there were, there were children or something in the picture. Uh, Blavi, you said something just now. Like, what if, oh, I'm getting a lot of flack, but I'm sorry. Um, I, would it be so strange that he stay married to the, the wife in New York or in the States and string Nicole along in DR so that he has his, you know, his cake and eat it too in both countries? He could go back and forth. Well, you got to remember, when you do the K-1 visa, his wife is financially obligated to support him for the first 10 years of their match. Mm -hmm. Right? So why would you give up money, essentially somebody having to take care of you? Why would you give up a green card? And then remember, he has to apply for citizenship, and the mm -hmm. spousal visa is the easiest way to get it, even if he wants to divorce his wife. He's in a rock and a hard place. I know plenty of people in this position. They wait until they get their green card, their citizenship, and mm -hmm. then they might get married after. But if you see what Mohammed, remember this happened with Mohammed and Danielle, because that's why they got a divorce. He was able to stay in the country because he had been here some years, and I think the television show helps them because it shows that they have employment. But when, but when this is the average person, you get sent back to your other country. Because if you remember on 90 Day, there was this couple called Cassie, and I think his name was David. He was really- Yes, she was from Brazil, a bleach hair. Yeah, she got, went back, they got divorced. She was, she was sent back, she was deported. This, what? Yeah, she was deported. And she was deported like a month after they got divorced. She was wow. deported. So it doesn't make sense to- <clears throat> leave the to not to get a divorce if you don't have citizenship because he does not have citizenship he has a green card it takes five years at least five years to get the green card no you get the green card right after you get married right after, okay and then you could apply for a citizenship after five years of being married mm -hmm. but let me ask you something wouldn't it look bad say suppose I came up, I got the marriage, um, I got my green card, I stayed married for five years, and then boom, I divorced. Then I go and apply for a K-1 for somebody else from my home country to bring up here to get married in 90 days. Doesn't well, that, that, look would be, that would be his only one. So he's already had one getting in the country. You only get two. Mm -hmm. and, even, and even Nicole is going to be harder for her to get citizenship. Because just because they can still reject her citizenship, I would say that's not a good way to go. Because essentially, when you do it the way they're trying to do it, it's harder for the person to get citizenship. Because they'll they can flag it as fraud. They can flag it as, you know, it's still a process. It's going to be a lot harder for her to get citizenship. It would be easier for her to do chain migration with Petro. Pet Petro. Yeah. Right, but Chantal is still not willing to help his family. Well, because because she doesn't want to take care of them for ten years. And I can I can agree with that. I can agree with that. He's not making enough money to take care of them, and because she has the degree, and she is going to be the higher earning at least for the four to five years it takes him to finish college, it would be on her. So, say for example, they get a divorce, she would be now required for Pedro, Nicole, and Lydia. And these people hate her. Why would you do that? Oh my God, yeah. So any debts that they they accumulate, she will be financially responsible for them, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's a financial thing. I personally think that Nicole and Lydia messed up when they got when they were so antagonistic with Nicole. I mean, mm -hmm. with Chantel, because whether yeah. you like her or not, she has the power to get you to the state. Yeah, she's the gateway for you to get up there. Yeah, because um, this happened actually with my grandmother and my um, cousin. Because my cousin was an American citizen, and she happened to be 
um, in a country that was war torn and they were having a civil war. So because my cousin was a citizen, she, she was able to come here. And then she got her citizenship through my, through my um, uncle with chain migration. And he got his citizenship through chain migration. It's the easiest way to do it. But people don't like doing it if it's not for an immediate relative. Hmm. My God. Well, so, I'm sure um, that you'll figure a way to make this into season three. Go ahead, Gatatua. Uh, yeah, and then for my last comment, because I think my network is acting up. Oh, and also the Muslim story and everything. I think Sadita and I have the same ideas in our head, but she said she's going to look at it and see what her Muslim senses tell her about Alejandro. So for I love a mama's boy. If I had a person coming to my house every Saturday, I would treat you like a like a, a cleaning lady. I'm sorry. I would leave all my dirty dishes and everything. And then just for equal equal measure, I would give you, I would leave for you a few things here and there. Like you'd find lingerie, you'd find some lube, you'd find some toys. Just as you're trying to be malicious and cleaning up the house that I stay with with your son. I want you to bump onto all those things and then ensure that they have his name on it. Like you know the most erotic and exotic things you can get. That's what I would do. Monogram toys. Nice. <laughs> yes. I, oh, I think. I, I just want to answer this question. Mm. Um, somebody asked if you can opt out. You can opt out, but remember, Larissa was able to stay in the country because she had a work visa with TLC. Mm. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how they're going to get into this country, but good luck to them. But she could also marry a Puerto Rican because Puerto Ricans have American, they get American passport. So that would be easier. I don't know if she'll do that, but that's another way. Nicole just needs to stop dating married men. That's what she needs to stop doing. Agreed. Agreed. Okay, so I'm going to uh, bring up everybody for final thoughts. So, Blavi, any final thoughts on either of these episodes? Um, it's going to be so good, and I'm very happy it's only 10 episodes, and it's not dragged out with 20 episodes. I which, which one? Um, Chantel? Chantel. Oh, it's only eight episodes. Next week is the finale. I thought it was 10. No, I thought it was eight. Well, whatever it is, it's done, and I'm happy because I'm like, I'm I'm over this season. I I would really like all three families to meet, but that's the messiness in me. Like I want Anjanette, Pedro's family, and to all to meet. I'm loving the Hell show. Yeah. I think it was it was it was um it was a great. It was a great show. Um, I do wish that Lydia had hit him with the purse just one good time, just one good time, so we could have his like his um sh um food coloring beard on her bag and just to laugh at it. But Why ruin a good bag with with beard coloring? It just would have been so hilarious. <laughs> oh my Bye. god! Bye guys. Bye love. See you next Bye, time. Bye lovey. Oh, wait. Lovey. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so Sad Star Podcast, what are your final thoughts on either of these shows? So for Family Chantel, best episode so far was was the episode, like the one that we talked about today, to be mm -hmm. honest. I enjoyed it very much. Um, for Lydia, I just want to say I understand Lydia, and I appreciate her work. I appreciate that she's looking out for her daughter. But I said this in one of my previous uh, videos about this family on my channel. And I said, listen, Nicole is never going to learn until Lydia lets her go and lets her fuck up. And that's when Nicole will learn that her mama was right. That's all, I, that's all I'm going to say about this. And Lydia, honey, Lydia was so sophisticated that she hit him with a purse. If that was me, if that was me. My flip flops would be flying everywhere. Every shoes flo flying. Uh, no, uh, some people in the comments were surprised that mm -hmm. 
she hit him. Guys, he deserves it. He's a fucking, he's a married man. His, yeah. This man is married. He is married. And I was just telling Gatatua in the, in the, in the background, season three, Gatatua and I are calling it right now. He is still married. And, by, and maybe he will marry Nicole or he will be engaged to Nicole and Nicole will find out that he's still married and he doesn't plan to get a divorce. But he, mar- he plans to marry her too because Muslims can, Muslim men can have different wives. So <laughs> Nicole is going to be the second or third or probably the fourth wife. And he can keep them all. That's, that's, that's what I'm calling. You know, oh, wow. if, y- y'all, let's make a bet. If Gatatua and I are correct, everybody has to pay up. <laughs> See, I think he's going to try to get the divorce, but I think that they're going to throw kids in the mix. And Same. it doesn't have to be from this wife. It could be like kids that he had back down in, in DR. D- really? Because he won't answer whether he has kids or not. That's the only reason why I say it. But they never asked him. On, they asked him once when Lydia was like, he has kids. And like, I loved when Lydia was like, he's hiding them. Like, yes, Lydia, tell us, honey, we know. Like if somebody threw that out at me, an accusation like that, I would have said, I don't have any kids. Like, go look for birth certificates. Yeah, no, I, that's my thoughts on that though. But I, Mm -hmm. I, (laughs) I think it will be a mess. I love that she swung the bag at him. That was very Caribbean. Um, He deserves it. Yeah, I've seen my mother pull that move a few times. Epic. <laughs> I've had a couple, I've had a few shoes pulled up on me <laughs> a few mm-hmm. times before. By the way, I just wanted to say something. Chantel's family, um, I lived in Dubai for um, 16 years. And I just want to say something. There is a desert between um, United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia. It's called the Empty Quarter Desert. People mm-hmm. go there and they never come back. I want you to send Chantel's family to that desert. They will go and they will never come back. I That's what they deserve you. at this point. Exactly, right? right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. For an episode see, um, like series, I think it did the best out of all of these shows that we've been seeing during COVID. It was quick. It was rapid fire. It was well done. <laughs> Well done. Yeah, I, <laughs> I enjoyed right. the episode to be honest. All right, Sad Star, we're gonna see you tomorrow again, maybe. Wait, what you guys have a live show tomorrow? Probably at four. Yeah. Yeah, you're definitely gonna find me. But before that, guys, go check out my channel, Sad Star Podcast. Please, we'll I beg do, you. We'll do. We'll do. Um, just put the link in our comment section as well. Oh, I, how can I do that? When the show is over, just go into the comments and tell us where to find you, like all your social media handles, or if you're just on YouTube, just tell us everything. Oh, Oh, yeah, and Sad Start, we're um, Debbie and I are working on a project. We're working on a project. Um, Mm -hmm. Since you guys are here, we'll tell you. We're working on a a, a second channel. Um, It's it's not going to be a commentary channel. So I will definitely be reaching out to you um to give you details it's gonna it's, it's a good it's a good thing for everybody so okay I'll be in i'm in i'm always in on everything <laughs> i agree <laughs> good so uh, we'll see you next time and thanks definitely. for supporting us and we're always here to support you as well thank you have a nice right, day bye bye okay gata tua any final thoughts can you hear me yes yes okay. Okay, my final thoughts are this. I now that you're saying it's the last episode, like I feel sad because I'm wondering, are they going to are we going to get a resolution in that final episode? I don't yeah. know. I feel like we're not, so that they then they're trying to build up to the next one, maybe. Mm-hmm. So Hudson and so. I are going to look into Alejandro with a with a microscope to figure out this <laughs> thing beforehand. Because I feel not only about the the divorce, but there's something about him and children mm-hmm. and maybe other other girls somewhere i don't know we'll see for uh, what else i'm sorry I, I i i i i tried watching mama's boy and i i'm almost bald i pulled most of my hair out because what 
But I will do it again just for you guys. I, I keep I keep doing these things for you. So if I die, no, you are the one to die. It's just it, it is a frustrating show because they do everything that I would not. Um, yeah, and then it, 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 it kind of makes me wonder, like, where is the logic sense of these people? So anyway, but I will I will still watch it. I'm still going to watch it. Um, I have I, I had not watched the this episodes of Family Chantel in, in its entirety, but I will watch that too. I'm also looking forward to the to the wedding and the dresses. And mm -hmm. I don't know, like you can tell them they can call me up. I can hook them up with a with a tailor. My tailor is not so bad. I need to get your opinions on the preview for next week of um, Chantel's family's dresses. They are atrocious. They look I, like, like little, like, I don't know, demented puppets or something. Yeah, I guess after this, we all have to get, go and take some ginkgo biloba because our brain cells are all done. Yeah, but we'll, we'll power through it. And I love you guys. <laughs> Oh, I want to meet you. I mean, I know it's really late for you, and we really appreciate you always taking part. Thank you so much, Jamal. Auntie has gone yeah. for a holiday. You're not going to see her in a while, so don't yeah. run away. It's yeah, just, I, the sweet I, old me that's here. No running away. I'm just always enjoy your thoughts, your insight. I'm so happy you know it's late. You call in, and I'm glad you guys have turned us on to Johannesburg. Um, mm -hmm. Gotta watch, gotta watch that. Gotta watch Vancouver this week. Mm -hmm. I mean, Johannesburg, them ladies, they they killing me. But I, I'm enjoying. I it's only one episode in, but I'm still enjoying them. That's right. So, I, yeah, and I'm looking forward to the new project because I think I saw something on it. But I'm looking forward to see what it is because you know you 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 people always make my night or my morning. Well, we try, we try. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, bye. Have a good one. Bye. bye. All right, Jamal. Any final thoughts? Hey. No, sorry. I just have I just have um everything shut off because I'm working. Um, so I still wanted to like chime in and listen and stuff. So hey. I have my work stuff everywhere. So yeah, it, this was great, Chantel. But like, I I wish more shows did stuff like this, make them shorter, compact. It keeps to me. I feel like Chantel's. Kept, kept me invested because it's quick as rapid fire. It's not these long, drawn out, like we're going to be talking about the same thing for four episodes. It's like, yeah, this is good. I'm okay with this. Pre-producer now. Yeah. And and I think this is why I'm, I'm losing it with um, Real Housewives of Atlanta on that first yes. episode. Because if what you say is true, that the first four episodes of this new season are all trash, what's the point? Uh, yeah, the new girls. I think it's just they. I was just more disappointed that they didn't introduce the new girls right away, so we could at least take the first episode to get to know them. I think that would have cut into the dryness of the season to start with, but they didn't do that. So I'm like, okay, like it's your show, but that's not the way I would have done it. Yeah, I think they need to find a new production company or something. I don't know something that cause they could have done. What they, this could have been way better. They could have. Definitely touched on the Black Lives Matter, but they could have also introduced the new girl somewhere in there as well. You know, like, yeah, I was, just, I, was, I was just disappointed. Marlo's the returning friend, and Drew, no, Tanya. Latoya. Oh, Tanya. But she's left mid season or end of season. End of season. And, and Latanya Latan is the, is her, no, Latoya. Mm -hmm. so Latoya, she's the the oh, next yeah. friend. She was supposed to be a full peach, but got demoted to friend. Right, and then Drew was the new peach, mm -hmm. and then um, based on everything else, Fallon comes in later. Who? Fallon. Who that? So basically, the way it was written is like so: Drew and Latoya were supposed to be the new peaches. What well, Drew? Um, Latoya got demoted due to her home situation with the, her husband and kids film. Mm -hmm. Drew got, from what I was recall, Drew got injured during filming. They didn't think she could, she may not be able to get around. So they had Fallon as a, a, the backup new Peach. But since Drew made it work and was able to make filmings, 
they're still going to bring on Fallon as the new friend, another new friend. Wait, what happened to Drew? How did she get injured? I think she, I think she like, like it was like right, like just when filming started, she hurt her foot, broke her foot or something like that. Was it while it was filming like, or outside of filming? Give me two seconds. That's so interesting. Far, guys. Sorry. I wish I'd. Okay. We know I'm that so you sorry. like the research. <laughs> hey, Queen Bee. Mm. Okay, it looks like she. Uh, this based on the the um the searches, it looks like the injury was actually while she was on another project. Oh, um, great. so it looks like she was just. The way I look at, I'm looking at. It looks like she was doing another project before filming, but so basically, they she didn't, didn't, they didn't know a paycheck. Yeah, and they <laughs> had Fallon in on backup. So when she kind of recovered and was able to like do filming, they 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 liked Fallon so much it appears that they were like, okay, we like you still, like we'll still make you part of a show, but just as a friend. Hmm. That's what that's the way that's the way it looks like it's playing out because there were reports like you know was Drew Segura gonna get fired, um, blah 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 blah, and then they like then the reports came out that. She's like she's making it to filming, so she's cool. But they're still bringing in Fallon because they had her on deck, so it should be cool. It should be really cool. Okay, all right. Well, but they they really should just start the season at the halfway mark and left out the first eight episodes. Oh, yeah. I you know what? A compact season full of you know zingers and surprises works for me. me I too. don't ever want to suffer through another twenty plus episodes of crap like how we did with 90 day fiance exactly um, agreed that's not the way to go right now our attention spans are not that long oh uh, definitely mine definitely isn't so i'm not going to sit here and pretend mm -hmm. i'm not going to sit here and pretend because i'm like what is this what's going on i don't and it's like you get to the point where i just don't care if i'm being honest i just don't care yep all right my this friend is another great show Yes, until tomorrow, everybody. Oh, please don't forget doing? to hit the thumbs I up. Um, tomorrow is um Johannesburg. It's Johannesburg, right? Yes, because uh, Vancouver is Friday. Friday. Yeah. Perfect. I just want to make sure I have I'm, I have a schedule right because I, I had to rewrite it down and I'm watching the shows kind of in order. Yeah. All righty. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Hit the thumbs up or thumbs down, but hopefully thumbs up. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for all of our alerts. Comment, <coughs> share, um, and see you tomorrow. Bye.